Every quantum computer so far has had one fatal flaw, instability. Microsoft says they just cracked it. And the way they say they did it, completely insane. We may have just skipped 20 years of progress with one chip. A quantum leap, powered by a particle we weren't even sure was real. Some scientists say it's legitimate, others call it vaporware, and those naysayers do have a good reason for their skepticism. Microsoft has a history of retracting major claims about these exact particles after peer reviews found problems with their data. But if Microsoft is right this time, it changes everything. Quantum computing isn't just a faster computer. It's a completely different beast. Your laptop thinks in bits, ones and zeros, on or off, like a train choosing between left or right at every fork. But quantum computers use qubits, and qubits are weird. Imagine a haunted railway where the train takes both pads at once until you take a peek at it. That's called superposition, and it means a quantum computer can explore countless possibilities at the same time. Like if Schrodinger's cat had a thousand tabs open and was solving Sudoku in all of them at once. Now imagine thousands of these haunted railways running in parallel, testing every possible solution, not one by one, but all at once. That's the quantum in quantum computing. Then there's entanglement, two qubits light years apart, instantly mirroring each other, change one and the other reacts, no matter the distance. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance, and yeah, he wasn't wrong. But here's the catch, all of that spooky magic is fragile, the tiniest disturbance, heat, vibration, even cosmic rays can knock the whole thing offline. Until now, that fragility has been quantum computing's kryptonite. One cosmic sneeze and your multi-million dollar qubit throws a tantrum like it's on Love Island. But Microsoft thinks they've found the solution. In February 2025, Microsoft unveiled something wild, a chip that can fit into the palm of your hand, the Majorana 1. And they claim it's the first quantum processor built using what they call topoconductors. Microsoft has been here before, though. In 2018 and 2021, they published major papers claiming to have found evidence of Majorana fermions, only to retract both papers later. So should we believe them this time? That's still up for debate. Most quantum computers use something called NISC devices, basically janky setups that work, but only with heavy-duty error correction. It's like trying to do brain surgery on a roller coaster. Shaky, expensive, and hard to scale. Basically, it's giving Kendall Roy running a tech startup in Season 4. Expensive chaos with daddy issues. But Microsoft took a completely different route. They built their chip around Majorana fermions, exotic particles predicted in 1937 by an Italian physicist named Ettore Majorana, who mysteriously disappeared. We'll dive into that story in the next video. These particles, or more accurately, quantum states that behave like them, are special because they naturally resist certain errors. That could make quantum computing finally stable, scalable, and useful. How? With these so-called topoconductors, which is essentially Microsoft's brand name for a hybrid material. They combined two ingredients, indium arsenide, a semiconductor, and aluminum, a superconductor. When cooled near absolute zero and exposed to a magnetic field, this combo creates a stable quantum state at the edge of the materials. It might even create a sort of protected lane for quantum information, like bowling with the bumpers up. Imagine normal qubits like balancing pencils on end. Even a sneeze knocks them over. Basically, quantum computing is allergic to reality. One cough and it's back to square one. These new qubits, they're like braids. As long as the braid pattern holds, the data survives. That technique, literally called braiding, physically weaves the information into the system's structure. It's like saving your data by tying a knot in a rope. You can twist the rope, stretch it, throw it across the room, but the knot, meaning the information, stays put. That's topology. It's not about where something is, but how it's shaped. Right now, Microsoft has eight of these topological qubits, but they claim they can scale to a million. For comparison, Google has about 70. IBM is aiming for 4,000. This might not be a lab experiment anymore. It could be the beginning of a new era of computing. But there's still major controversy. The physics community has been burned by Microsoft's Majorana claims before, and they're not buying it without extraordinary evidence. Some researchers believe Microsoft might be seeing ordinary quantum effects that they're misinterpreting as exotic Majorana behavior. Think hoofbeats. Is it a horse or a quantum zebra? If Microsoft is right, they've solved quantum computing's biggest problem, error correction. Instead of needing thousands of regular qubits to make one reliable qubit, topological qubits could work with much less overhead. That's the difference between a science experiment and a practical computer, and Microsoft's been playing the long game, 
While Google and IBM chased short-term quantum demos, Microsoft poured over a decade and billions of dollars into topological quantum computing, a bet most people thought was too risky, too theoretical. But now, the physics, the material science, and the chip fabrication capabilities finally aligned. Microsoft didn't just publish a paper, they've been building toward a full-stack quantum system, from exotic quantum states to the chip, the hardware, and the Azure cloud platform that controls it. If their assumptions are correct, then it's not just a breakthrough, it's a signal they're not just in the race, they're trying to skip the track entirely. So what could this quantum beast actually do? First up, medicine. Developing a new drug costs billions and takes over a decade. Why? Because classical computers can't simulate molecules accurately. They're quantum systems, after all. Quantum computers speak the same language as molecules. They could simulate drug interactions before human trials, simulate how a disease mutates years before it actually does, letting us develop vaccines preemptively instead of reactively. Cure diseases we currently consider incurable. Material science? Stable quantum computing could help us invent room temperature superconductors, carbon negative concrete, solar panels with 90% plus efficiency. Encryption? They could break modern cryptography, but they could also create unbreakable encryption using quantum key distribution. Stealing that data would literally break physics. Scientific discovery? Design fusion reactors, simulate black holes, understand how life began. They could rewind molecular evolution, watching the exact moment lifeless chemistry sparked into biology. Not a guess, a quantum replay. In short, it's about solving problems we currently can't even define. Smarter computers can help us design even smarter computers. It's like giving your brain a brain, and then that brain builds a better one. Imagine building a house, not out of wood or stone, but out of mathematical certainty. Forget HDTV. This is Minecraft, but with quantum shaders and no lag. Every beam simulated, every screw optimized. You're not picking a school based on rankings. You're choosing from outcomes already tested in quantum models, tailored to your child's potential. A farmer doesn't guess when to plant. They're given simulations of weather patterns decades out and choose seeds engineered for the future that hasn't happened yet. You don't just get a health checkup, you get a forecast, a glimpse into the body you might have five years from now and how to rewrite that timeline. Like Apple weather, but instead of telling you it might rain, it tells you your liver is gonna ghost you in six years unless you chill. Stable quantum computers won't just change tech, they could change how we make decisions with more clarity, foresight, and compassion than ever before. But let's not pop the champagne just yet. Quantum computing still has massive hurdles. First off, they're drama queens. A simple change in temperature and the whole quantum computation collapses like a Jenga tower in an earthquake. And don't expect them to replace your laptop. They aren't general purpose. Quantum computers today are like prototype spaceships, powerful, but incredibly limited. Their focus is narrow, specific types of simulations, optimizations, and cryptographic problems that are practically impossible for classical computers. But beyond those niche domains, they're kind of useless. You can't run Chrome on a quantum chip. You can't even trust it to add 2 plus 2 consistently unless it's been cooled to near absolute zero and shielded from stray magnetic fields. Physically, most of these machines are massive, often taking up entire rooms with towering refrigeration systems, tangles of superconducting cables, and an operating environment colder than outer space. Even Microsoft's 8-qubit prototype isn't something you slip into a server rack. These aren't gadgets, they're physics experiments dressed as computers. Then there's the software side. We don't just need faster hardware, we need quantum algorithms built for new physics. Having a quantum computer without the right algorithms is like having a Formula One car with no driver. And again, Microsoft's breakthrough isn't universally accepted. The existence of Majorana particles still remains unverified. Finally, scaling. Going from eight qubits to a million is a leap, a moonshot, a space elevator, which ironically, we might actually be able to design if this thing works. So let's say Microsoft pulls it off. What does that future look like? AGI development supercharged. Models that would have taken years to train could be born in days, unlocking creativity, intelligence, and collaboration at a scale we've never seen. The economy? According to a 2024 Boston Consulting Group analysis, quantum computing could unlock $450 to $850 billion in value globally by 2040. Global politics? 
Quantum supremacy isn't just about faster math. It's about who gets to ask the big questions first and answer them. And think about this. Every major computer breakthrough started bulky. ENIAC filled a room. Now your phone fits in your hand and runs a million times faster. If we ever manage to shrink quantum computers down and pair them with AGI, we're not just talking about faster processing. We're talking about a pocket-sized oracle. One day, your wearable might help you design a personalized school curriculum, simulate your next relationship before it happens, or coach your immune system like a digital personal trainer. That's not smart tech. That's straight up supernatural. But the biggest shift? What we dare to dream. We could simulate the evolution of entire ecosystems. We could generate materials that self-repair, decode how collective intelligence works. We might even simulate alternate histories and test policies before they're enacted. We're talking the Sims for government with cheat codes for no poverty and infinite healthcare. Maybe we engineer entirely new senses, hearing magnetic fields, visualizing data as color, seeing colors only exotic species can currently see, or feeling wireless signals on your skin. We could push beyond the boundaries of biology, building interfaces where human intuition and quantum logic blur. Or it could answer age-old physics questions that we can't answer here on Earth, like what happens inside a black hole, how gravity behaves at the quantum level, or whether time itself has a smallest possible unit. This isn't just a new type of computer. It's a telescope pointed inward, into the deepest structures of our reality. In other words, therapy, but for physics. And just like therapy, expensive, confusing, and possibly life-changing. True quantum computing success used to be a distant dream, but if Microsoft's claims pan out, it might be a decade or two away. The Majorana 1 chip might be a miracle, or a mirage, or it could be the first crack in the dam, a step into a world where the biggest problems on Earth, disease, energy, meaning itself, are no longer unanswerable. If this development is real, then we're not just upgrading processors. We're upgrading possibilities. When is the next revolution in computing? Well, the future is quantum, and it's on our doorstep right now. If your brain feels like a melted Rubik's Cube right now, smash that like button, subscribe for more reality-bending breakdowns, and drop a comment. If you had a stable quantum computer at your fingertips, what problem would you want it to solve first? Stay curious, and I'll see you in the next patch note.